we're, we're moving towards um, a process where we will do uh, three updates per, y per year uh, that will be scheduled um, to fall between terms for as many people as possible. And of course, everybody's on different schedules, so you know it's not always possible to launch this where you know everybody's on break except for maybe Christmas time. But um, so we're, we're looking to do more regularly scheduled updates so that everybody is made aware of them in advance and um, um, you're prepared for them when they come. It's, it's, not, it's not a surprise when all of a sudden you log in one day and you know, something looks different. So the first, um, the first uh, major uh, release uh, or update that we've done uh, with this new process occurred uh, last month in July. Uh, we did send out email notification um, to all registered ULAB users so that you would have a heads up on that. And hopefully everybody got that in and was prepared when they, when they saw the updates. So um, what I want to do today is just uh, kind of walk through the updates for people who may have not had time to you know, get in and, and uh, check them out and uh, answer any questions uh, on any of these. So first I'm just going to run through a couple of slides just, just kind of uh, with bullet points uh, highlighting the different features that we're going to talk about today. And then um, I've just got three slides here and then I'm going to jump into, into eLab and we will, um, I'll, I'll walk you through each of the features and explain uh, how they work and what the what the uh, rationale or the logic is behind them. So the first uh, group of updates are updates to the assignment module, um, and there were uh, four four main updates to this. Uh, a couple of them are, are pretty big ones that have been requested by people for a while. Um, one of the mi minor ones, uh, although it was requested by uh, a few of our customers, was um, a visual cue for um, assignment resubmissions. Um, and I'll explain that certainly more when I get to it, but basically um, people wanted the ability to, to see at a quick glance um, if an assignment uh, that had already been graded for a particular student, but the student was allowed to resubmit a visual cue for when that assignment was, was uh, resubmitted. Um, the next feature is, I think, one of the uh, most important features or um, features of this July release that is going to make you your life easier as an instructor, uh, particularly in preparing for a course, and that is we've added the ability to um, add batches of assignments at a time from our assignment library, as opposed to having to go one by one and add these assignments. So I'll, I'll give you a, a demo of that. And also, similarly to that, is the ability to edit um, batches of assignments. So instead of if you have five assignments and you need to change, you know, one thing for each of them. Instead of having to go into each one of them individually and save it, you can now um, uh, make edits to, to batches of assignments that you select. Um, the fourth uh, point here, um, you know, may not affect anyone on, you know, may not affect most people, um, but, but we've increased the maximum number of files that can be attached to an assignment um, to 15. And there's a reason for that. It's, it's, uh, we just recently launched an accounting series, and um, some of the assignments in some of the practice sets in those require several files to be attached. And previously, the maximum was, I believe it was eight. And there are some exercises where, in the accounting series where you, where you may need more than eight. And so that, that's the reason for that. Um, there were a couple uh, updates to our, to our test module. Uh, there will be more updates to the test module coming as part of our August up, uh, release, which I'll, I'll talk about towards the end here. Um, but a, a big one here that was requested by a lot of users uh, is the ability for the student to access their concept review quizzes from the student test page. Um, previously, students could only access the concept review quizzes, which are the preloaded quizzes um, that were already set up for, for the instructor. They could only access those from the content area. Um, but they accessed all their other tests from the test page, and we had, you know, a lot of customers tell us that led to confusion for the students, so we now provide the ability to the student to access the concept review quizzes um, from the student test page and the content area. And uh, the other test module update, uh, update was the ability for the instructor to extend the due date uh, on a test or the availability window on a test for an individual student. And again, I'll get into all of these in more detail uh, during the demo. And then there were some gradebook updates. Um, we um, provide the ability to use more special characters when naming assignments or tests or creating uh, custom gradebook columns. Um, there, there, there were some, some um, 
characters that are used, and, and they can cause the gradebook to kind of behave strangely. Um, there are still some limitations. There are some characters that still can't be used, and I've listed those here. And they're also listed in the updated uh, eLab user guide as well. We've also added at the request, again, of, of some customers to uh, add the ability for the instructor to hide the category average uh, from the student, as well as the ability to hide the final grade from the student uh, in the student view of the gradebook. Uh, for our selective release feature, um, there was a grading issue there uh, where when you had two versions of an assignment or a test that were released to different groups of students in the same class, um, the students who didn't get the assignment released to them were given a zero by default, um, which certainly did not make any sense. Um, and so we've, we've fixed that. I'll go through that again in more detail. And then the final grade for the student is now being calculated on a rolling basis. Um, and again, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in more detail once we get into the gradebook updates during the demo. Okay, so I am going to switch over to um, to the live demo of eLab here. So let me log back in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these uh, individual uh, updates or features and just give you a demonstration of them and if there's any questions again as Natalie said earlier you can use the question um, tool in uh, GoToWebinar and we will be sure to address your questions. So I'm going to start out with the assignment module updates. Um, the first uh, feature and I mentioned this was the visual cue um, for assignment resubmissions. So what this means is um, when you set up an assignment you have the option to allow the student up to five resubmissions. So students submit the assignment, you grade it, provide them feedback, they could resubmit it and, and have it be regraded. When you go into the assignments area, so I'm going to work with this uh, third assignment listed here, the uh, word uh, lesson one, reinforce your skills number three, and you click into see the list of students. Um, this request was made because for a the first student here listed John Smith, the student has got an 80% on their submission. But you notice here in the graded slash attempts column, it says that there's only been one of two attempts graded. Um, there, it, the customer that requested this wanted a, another visual cue. So they wanted in, in the points earned column here an asterisk or some, something so that when they saw that, it would, it would be a cue for them that, oh, okay, this student's grade right now is an 80%, but there's another submission that's pending grading, so, so this grade could, um, may change. So it's uh, a fairly minor change, but it was, it was again, something that, um, that we had a, a couple customers request, and uh, so we went ahead and, and implemented it. Um, the next feature that I want to cover in assignments is the ability to uh, bulk edit or you know, edit batches of assignments. So as you can see here, I've got uh, seven different assignments that are set up. And um, all of them are called lab assignments. But let's just say that I wanted to change um, the assignment type and let's say the due date for these last three assignments. Previously, what would happen is you would have to, for each individual assignment, you would have to click the edit icon, go into the assignment, make your changes, save the assignment, come to the second assignment, click the edit icon, make the changes, save it, and do the same thing for the third uh, third assignment. Now what we've done, and, uh, and actually before I show this, we've also changed the interface here slightly. Um, if you notice, these used to be uh, just blue rectangular buttons. We've, we've added some icons um, in place of the buttons, and we've uh, done a little bit of reorganizing of this menu uh, right here uh, above the column headings. So what you do to edit assignments and batches is you just simply select the assignments you wish to edit by checking the box next to them and click the edit all checked link and that's going to bring you to the edit assignment page for the first assignment so I'm going to change this let's say to a homework and I'm just going to go down and I'm going to change the due date to let's say tomorrow okay and you scroll to the bottom and you click save and next and it brings you right to the edit assignment page for the next assignment so you can quickly and easily make the changes for that assignment 
And I'll also change the due date here. Come down, save and next. Make my changes. And once you've hit the last assignment, you just get a save assignment um, button. And so now all three of these assignments have been changed. Those, those settings have been changed. The other feature, the one that I think is in terms of um, ease of use for the instructor in, in setting up their courses is, is probably the biggest feature that we've released is the ability to add batches of assignments from the assignment library. So for those of you that are familiar with UAB, you know that the page I'm looking at here is the list of the active assignments in your course. But we uh, pre-populate an assignment library, I'm going to click the assignment library icon, with all of the end of lesson exercises uh, from the book and, um, and uh, the additional exercises that are included in the uh, instructor support package. So previously, uh, if you wanted to add, let's say, you know, five assignments or three assignments, you would have to click the Use link for each assignment, go in and make your settings, and then save the assignment and come down, come back to the assignment library, click the Use link for the next one and go through the same process. So what we've done, and let me actually back up here. I, I did skip one thing that I need to show you first because the key to this is the global settings feature. So if you want to be able to add assignments in batches from the assignment library, what you need to do is you need to go to your global settings, okay, you need to do this for each of your course sections, and set your default global settings. So you set the assignment type, the maximum points, you know, whether or not you want due dates, um, and all these, other, all these other settings. And what this will do is it will allow you to um, get most of the work done you know, automatically. Okay, due dates are something that are probably going to be different for the different assignments, and so I'll show you how you can easily modify those for each of the assignments that you're going to upload um, in this batch. So I'm just going to um, cancel out of here. My changes are already saved. And I'm going to go back to the assignment library. And let me just go down here, and I'll add uh, some uh, Excel assignments here. So let's say I want to add... Um, uh, these three Excel assignments. I select them, go up to the top and, and click Use All, um, Use All Checked. And the first thing it's going to ask me is, do you want to apply your global settings to all selected assignments? If you choose No, then you're going to have to go in and set each of those fields for, this, for each of these three assignments individually. If you choose Yes, it's then going to tell me that my global settings are in place but ask me if I want to make any edits to these assignments. So let's say I want all the settings for these assignments to be the same except the due dates. They're going to be different. Um, if I click Save, it's just going to save the assignments with all the global settings in place. If I click Make Edits, it's going to bring me to um, the Edit Assignment page like it did for when I was showing you how to edit multiple assignments at a time. And I would just go here and change the due date, let's say, to that. I scroll down, I click Save and Next. Okay, I go to the next assignment, I set the due date for that. Come down, click Save and Next. Make the uh, due date change for the last assignment. And then save it. And so now all of these um, assignments, these three Excel assignments are set up with the global settings in place and the um, due dates modified for each individual assignment. So it, it'll make it much quicker and easier for you to use the assignment library um, to set up um, assignments for your course. Jason? <clears throat> yes. Let's, uh, so the, the other thing uh, to consider is you can actually set, a, set up global settings for a specific topic and then go back and change them for the next group of assignments, right? Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. So maybe um, you know, maybe you wanted, maybe you call uh, your reinforce your skills exercises, you call those, you know, those are lab assignments, let's say, but your apply your skills exercises are um, homework assignments, okay, and you, you know, you grade them differently, you, you weight the, the averages for those two different types of assignments differently when configuring your final grade. So what you would do, so right now my global settings are set up uh, for homework, 
and I just set up these three reinforce your skills. What you can then do is when you're ready to set up all the apply your skills um, exercises for your course, is just come into global settings, change it to lab assignment, save those settings. Okay, the assignments that were previous that were set up with the previous global settings, th those are not changed by changing the global settings. Then you can go back into the assignment library. And you know, pick your apply your skills exercises that you want to set up. Let's say these here, and then just go through the same process. Um, choose use all checked, and go through the same process I just did for the reinforce your skills. And it it's a way to do it with with you know having to change less things. You know, when you if you choose to edit edit each of those individual assignments. So that that's definitely a way you can do it. So yeah, you can change the global any of the global settings any of the points, weight, anything at all, and it does not affect anything that was previously set up with global settings. Great, great. And one question, uh, I think since some of the people are seeing the assignments, they see the little PG icon. Can you tell them what the PG icon stands for real quick? Sure. For those that are not familiar with the UAB, uh, the PG icon stands for project grader. And so those are assignments. There's a, there's a, a, um, a select number of sites, basically one, uh, one assignment or one project per chapter um, in most of the lessons in our series um, where that project is automatically graded by ELAB. But the other assignments are not automatically graded. The, the instructor hand grades those, but the ones with the PG icons are automatically graded. And, Great. and th they can also be set up using, um, using the batch, the batch uh, you know, adding of assignments. Um, the only thing that uh, uh, is a little bit different is the maximum points are won't won't uh, default to your global settings. They'll, they'll default to the um, to the default points for a project grader exercise, which um, is, is it's just a different way they're set up because of because of being automatically graded. But everything else is the same. Super. Thanks. Okay. Um, so that's that's really it for the assignment module. So I'm going to move on now uh, to the test area. And um, one of the uh, areas of feedback that we got, as, as I mentioned earlier when I was just giving you an overview of the, of the new features, is that um, the way our courses are set up, the way UAB is set up, I'm going to enter UAB as a, as a student now. I'm going to click the View as Learner tab. And um, I'm going to go to this course. So as a student, um, there are a couple different kinds of, of, of tests and quizzes that, that are available in ELAP. Um, from the content area, which is where you know, the training materials are located for ELAB, um, within each, each lesson in the book, there are various resources here. Okay, the student exercise files, video tutorials, all different kinds of, of, of content. And then the last thing is always a concept review quiz. And the concept review quizzes are really designed to be a self-check for the student. They used to be in the, printed in the textbook. We, we removed them from the textbook with our Office 2010 series to save valuable page space and move, move them to eLab so that they are automatically graded. The students can take them and get instant feedback. And they're really designed as a self-check. So because of that, in eLab, we've always included them in the content area, in the training area, because th that's how we viewed them. But, you know, we had... You know, several customers, you know, came to us and said, you know, we understand why they are where they are, but our students take all their other tests by going to the test area, and they miss the concept quizzes sometimes. You know, maybe they don't; is, they're not a student who views the videos, okay, um, and they just are working through the exercises in the book, and so it, it's confusing to students, and some students miss them because they're used to going to the test area for, for most of their tests, but then going to the content area for concept review quizzes. So what we did is we simply added the ability for the student to now access these quizzes from either place. So they are still in the content area. They can be accessed from there. They're also now on the student test page, so the student can simply start the quiz from the student test page, and everything else is the same. Um, it's just 
basically they're accessing the uh, test from a different from a different they have more options of where to access those quizzes from and uh, hopefully it will alleviate some of that confusion uh, for students okay I'm going to uh, return to instructor view here and um, the next feature uh, for the test module is the ability to extend the due date for a test for an individual student so um, I'm going to go into my lesson four test here okay and I'm going to click on uh, learner results and you can see here that the date available okay the date that the test opened was July 8th at 9 a.m. Eastern and the student had to complete the test by 3 o'clock that day so they had a six hour window to take to take the test well let's say you have you know a couple of students who just missed the test they just you know they didn't have any any you know legitimate excuse they just missed the test but you had a student who had a legitimate excuse you know he or she had a family emergency you know some something that came up where you as the instructor would give them the ability to take the test at a later time um, the, previously you would have to change the due date for the test for the entire class so those a couple of students who didn't really have a legitimate excuse could get in and take the test you know during that extended time what this feature does is it allows you now to change that due date for just a particular student. So I'm going to take Sonia Smith here, and I'm going to go click on Sonia's name. And now you notice there's a couple other fields to this test information window. There's the course date available and the course date due. That's the date the test is available and due for you know the course, the rest of the class. Then it's student date available and student date due. You can see these are the same right now. Well, let's say Sonia had a legitimate excuse why she could not complete this test yesterday. And so, you know, I say to her, okay, Sonia, I'm going to change your availability window to, um, you know, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I change the setting for her. I click the Save um, link. And now you notice that the course date available and course date due are different from the student date available and student date due. Sonia's test is now due on the 10th. But if I go back and look at the other students and I go look at John Smith, okay, John Smith's dates are still the 8th. Okay, he didn't have a legitimate excuse, so he doesn't get to make up the test. So that's the, um, that's the second test module feature, the ability to extend the due date for an individual student. Um, and that's actually that's actually it for the uh, test module. Um, like right, I and I was I was going to uh, jump time. in, Jason. If anyone has any specific test uh, module type questions about either this new feature or anything about the test, uh, please feel free to type in as you think of them, and uh, Jason and I can help address them as we go through or at the end of the webinar. So uh, please feel free to type away uh, if you have any questions on uh, the test or anything else. Okay, so the last area we're going to cover are the updates to the gradebook. Um, and most, there's really not a lot to demo for these uh, these features. It's really going to be more more of me explaining them to you. There's a couple things I can show you, but most of it is really an explanation. Um, so the first thing is I mentioned allowing the special characters. So when you you know name your homework assignments here, or you name your tests. Um, there was a lot of characters that could not be used or they would cause the gradebook to go a little um, haywire. So we added in as many of, or now allow as many of those special characters as we could. The ones that I showed you on the slide previously, um, they still can't be used for various uh, programming reasons, which I don't understand because I'm not a programmer myself. Um, so that that's the first update there. The second update is that um, in the student view, the student has a, a, a gradebook view themselves, and uh, they can see their grades, and they see their final grade, and they see their you know, category average for each category. So in this case, we have a category, category excuse me, up here called homework, and there's a category average there for homework, and we have lab assignments, and there's a category average there, and lesson tests, and there's a category average there, and then the final grade. Well, some instructors don't want the student to um, be able to 
you know, see their final grade or see their category average while the class is going on. So what we've done is we um, implemented the ability to just turn that off for the students. So by going into configure final grade in the grade book, you now have these options here to display final grade for students, yes or no, display category average for students, yes or no. So um, when I turn these off, when I change them to no and click update, I go back to the grade book, to the instructor view of the grade book, those averages are still visible to the instructor, okay, and as is the final grade, but when I go into learner view or student view and I go into the grades, you do not see the category averages or the final grade. You only see the grades for each individual um, assignment or test. Um, all right, so the other uh, Jason, final two features, sure. While you, while you speak about averages, uh, a good question uh, came up. When you allow for the resubmission of an assignment, mm -hmm. can you choose whether the assignment gets the highest score or an average of the two scores? Uh, sure. What you can do when you set up your assignment, and I'm just going to go like I'm going to set up a new assignment here, is one of the last fields um, is in setting up the uh, assignment or test, either one, because you can allow multiple attempts at tests, is attempt use, and you have the option to use the highest score, the lowest score, the average score of the attempts, the first attempt or the last attempt. So absolutely, Great, thank so that you. just depends how you have that set up. So the last um, couple features here have to do with grade calculation. Um, so when you set up a test or an assignment, uh, there is an option called selective release. So uh, let's say you're working in a test and you give 60 minutes for your test. Um, but you have a student that has you know, special needs and they, you know, um, uh, they need to get extra time on a test. What you can do is you create your test and you set it for 60 minutes and then you make a copy of the test and you call it something slightly different and you set the time limit on that. It, so on the first test you would release that test to, you know, all the students in the class except for your, let's say, you know, that one student and then you would copy the test, name it something slightly different and you know, make the uh, time available 75 minutes or 90 minutes, whatever, and then you would release that test to only that student, okay? The problem with the way the grade was being calculated is whichever, um, we'll call it version one, version two of the test, the students who had version one released to them, the grade book would, um, would uh, calculate a zero for version two and vice versa. So um, that has been fixed and so now when you go into the grade book, um, the, in the grade columns, um, you will see in NA if that test or that assignment is not available to that student. And so anything with an NA is not factored into the grade. Okay? So if there's a dash, it means that the student has not completed the test and the due date has not passed. If there's a zero, it means they either got a zero or the due date has passed and they didn't take the test. If there's a you know score, that's obviously what they got. And then the NA now lets you see that, okay, this, this word lesson five test was only released to this one student. It was not released to these other two students. And it, so it's not, um, it's not um, factored into their, into their uh, grade for, for in, into their, uh, category average and then ultimately their their final grade. Um, the other grade book um, issue, and this wasn't really an issue that affected the student's grade ultimately, but um, caused students to panic, let's say, during the course. Um, so in this in this case here where I have all these different you know tests and assignments set up, um, let's say you had had ten things that were being graded during the the course, and um, 
the student completed the first three things, and they got 100 on all of them. Um, their final grade would be showing up as a, as a 30 because it, the grade book would, would count anything that hadn't been taken yet, even if it wasn't due yet as a zero, until it was completed. So even though the student had you know, three grades, 100, 100 points, that's 100 average, um, it, it would calculate their grade as 300 points divided by 10 instead of divided by 3, and so their average would show up as a 30. It would improve as the course went on, but it was difficult you know, for the student to really see where, the, where they were at. So we changed the way that, that, um, that functions. So now the, the final grade is calculated on a rolling basis. So now the only grades that get factored into the category average and then the final grade are for test and assignments that have been, been completed and graded um, or test or assignments where the due date has passed and the student did not com complete the test or assignment. So that's why for these zeros here, that means that for these tests or this assignment, the due date is passed and the student just didn't do it. The ones with dashes um, mean either that the test was not um, released to that student or that the due date has not um, yet passed for that test or assignment. And so, so those grades do not get, get calculated into the category average or the final grade until the due date hits or the test or assignment has been completed. Hope that makes sense. Okay, Natalie, let me take a couple of questions if there's any on the gradebook area, and then um, I will run through the slides on what's coming for the August release and then take any more questions at that point. Wonderful. So with respect to the gradebook, uh, uh, for some of the newer users or those who haven't seen eLab before, Chris had a question about how students are actually added to the gradebook. Students are added to the gradebook automatically when they are enrolled in the course. So um, when a student uh, comes into your course and they're going to have their eLab license key, and that license key will have a um, a, you know, a license key code on it, and you will provide them with the course code uh, for your you know, course or, or you know, your particular section of the course, and you obtain that course code by going to the Manage um, tab and the Course Link and ID tab. And so this course code is unique. So you might have three sections in the fall of this year of you know, Intro to Computers, you know, CIS 100, let's call it. And you've got three different sections, and so you create three different, you know, CIS 100 courses in ELAP. Each section will have a unique course code that distinguishes your sections from each other. When the student logs into ELAP, they register their account. They log into ELAP. They'll enter this course code. That'll ad identify which section of the course, of your course, they're in. They enter their license key. That shows they've, they've paid to use ELAP. At that point, the student is automatically added to your gradebook. Any other questions for now? Yes, actually. Uh, one other thing, uh, a concern raised by uh, Lewis is, uh, can you go back to the grade book idea of the rolling average? The concern might be that a student thinks that that's their final grade, uh, that they don't have to complete any other assignments because that's their grade. Do you say rolling somewhere? Or can you show that again? Of what you know, Will it say rolling on the student screen? No, it's, it's going to say final grade. Um, what I would suggest is um, you know, just letting them know that the final grade is their grade at this, you know, at this particular point in the course. Um, let me um, let me first go in and change, and let me re uh, turn on the averages here. Okay, and then I go in as a learner. to the grades. And so it's just going to give a, a category a column over here, Lewis, that'll say uh, category average and then, you know, final grade down here. Um, uh, I guess we could add maybe current final grade to that or something to that effect. Um, I think that's something we should uh, take a look at offline, Jason, and, uh, and just look at if we could maybe put some type of little note or something like that. Yeah, some kind of disclaimer there. Maybe a yeah. little 
asterisk or a yeah note or something. Okay. I'm just taking a note here, Natalie. No, yeah, that's great. And I'm going to look at some of the other questions. Again, feel free to type uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, since we're nearing the end of some of the features Jason was going to show, we're, we're going to open it up to any elab-related questions uh, would be fine for this webinar. Uh, so another comment uh, from Lewis is, do we have the ability to delete an assignment uh, which needs to be resubmitted Uh, hang on, let, uh, me, uh, let me look at the, uh, the question again. The ability to delete an assignment which needs to be resubmitted so that you've given them a chance to go back and submit. Lewis is spending a lot of time rechecking for a resubmit because it shows submitted and needs grading. I think, Lewis, that's the new feature Jason was showing uh, at the beginning in terms of the new flag that shows you something's been resubmitted. So maybe Lewis came a little bit late to the... Uh, to the meeting, but that'll be in the new features uh, user guide you can look at, too. It's a new little flag that shows you it's been resubmitted. It needs to be graded. Um, yeah, that's this little asterisk here. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Good. Uh, so that little asterisk you see there. In the points earned column. Exactly. So we'll see. Uh, go. You can go back to your presentation, and uh, I'll continue to consolidate all the questions and see if we can get to Lewis's uh, item there. Okay. Uh, one actually, right. one so, overall general question. Actually, that this is good. Before you start into that, an eLab license key uh, can include all programs. Uh, the types of license keys that eLab offers, uh, a question by Chris is, what does it include? It can either be by textbook, so for example, Word, Excel, building a foundation, which includes all four applications, or an unlimited key that would actually enable a student to enroll in multiple courses. So both of those options are available. Okay, shoot, I'll uh, stop the interruptions for now. Okay, so just a couple more slides here. Um, so coming in August, and the date of when this will be released is to be determined, but we will send out an email notification prior to it. Um, there's a couple uh, update, a couple big updates coming to the test module. We'll be adding the global settings for tests, so you'll be able to set global settings like you can for assignments for your tests. Um, and we will add the ability to add tests in batches like you can for assignments, and also the ability to edit tests and batches. Um, the editing of test is, um, you know, somewhat limited because you'll be able to change the settings on the the, the first screen. But obviously, um, you know, it will, you can't, you know, te test different tests of different questions. But um, it will certainly make it easier to to make, um, you know, my, more minor changes to to multiple tests at a time. But um, you will be able to to add um, tests and batches like you can um, assignments. Uh, just a couple things from the assignments uh, module will be coming. Um, the bulk of the updates really came in the in the um, the June update. Um, we're finishing some things up here for um, in August. Some things that kind of got got had to get uh, pushed back. Um, we uh, are going to remove the requirement that um, assignments with resubmissions have due dates on them. Um, when you set up an assignment, you can choose to not have any due dates. Um, but when you, if you set up your assignment and you want to allow it, allow resubmissions, you have to, it, it forces you to then set a due date for the, for your first submission and set a due date for the resubmissions. So we're going to remove that requirement. That, that's, that was at the request of some customers as well. And we also are going to add the ability to sort assignments by, um, the, uh, ungraded submission column heading so that, um, it, what I mean by that is uh, when you're looking at um, at your assignments and uh, you'll be able to sort by uh, to see which assignments have ungraded submissions instead of having to scan through you know if you've got lots of assignments scroll through and try and you know pick out the ones that have ungraded submissions you'll be able to sort it so that all those pop up to the top and you can just go right down through them and, and, and grade the, uh, the submissions there and um, then some miscellaneous uh, updates in, in August. Um, there is the course copy feature. 
where you know if you teach a course in you know January and you're going to reteach it in in fall, uh, you can copy it and it allows you to set your your start and end dates for the you know original course that you taught in January, the start and end dates for the you know fall semester version of the course, and then there's an algorithm that re recalculates your due dates for tests and assignments. Um, we found some bugs in that in that um, algorithm, and so we will be correcting that and um, get, getting that cleaned up. Uh, there will also be an analytics module coming that will allow you to um, drill into your course and go, go to this report and see um, on a student by student basis what they're actually using in the course. So you'll be able to see, you know, for student A, that student A has watched, you know, 60% of the videos for the entire course, drill into the unit level, okay, and in the word unit they've watched, you know, 80% of the videos, go into the lesson level, same thing, and then actually go into a specific videos and see how much of each video they've watched, whether they've gone through the, the lesson overview presentation, you know, how much of it they've gone through, um, and, and th those kinds of things. So we're trying to give instructors a little more um, insight into, you know, what learning resources that are provided by us in eLab the students are actually using. So hopefully, you know, if you have a, you know, it'll help you make some connections. If you have a student who may be struggling and you can see that they're not really using, utilizing the resources, you know, hopefully that will help you, you know, get them on the right path. We're also adding a session timeout notification. So um, when uh, when you're working in eLab and the, the session times out, um, if you you know, pick. You, know, you got a student comes into your office. He asks you a question. Session times out. There's no notification, and so um, you may continue doing some work. But when you click to save it, you get logged out, and you have to kind of redo that work. And it's been cause some frustration for some people. So we are adding a session timeout notification, similar to when you're you know doing your online banking and you're idle for you know x number of minutes. A window will pop up say you've been inactive for you know x number of minutes. And you know, do you wish to continue or close the session? And if you don't answer within 60 seconds or, or two minutes, um, then it it it'll time you out then, and you'll you'll get a notification. And then uh, the big thing is we will be releasing very soon our D2L um, LTI integration app. And once that is released, we'll be developing our Blackboard LTI integration app, um, and then uh, ultimately a Canvas LTI integration app after that. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you, um, for, for those of you who use you, any one of those three uh, learning management systems, um, it's going to allow you to very, very easily, seamlessly integrate your eLab course with D2L, Blackboard, or Canvas um, so that your students will only have to log into eLab once. And from then on, they will have single sign-on. So you'll be able to um, literally, by, by checking check boxes for your eLab content um, in this app, it'll embed deep links into the, into the other learning management system, D2L, Blackboard, or Canvas, and so the students will be able to, you know, hit your, your Word Lesson 3 test link in D2L, it'll bypass the eLab login, bring them right to the test in eLab, they'll take the test in eLab, and then as soon as they submit it and it's graded, it'll automatically send the grade back to your D2L gradebook or your Blackboard gradebook or um, you know, Canvas gradebook, and so it's going to go a long ways and really help um, tying our our you know publisher platform with your school's uh, learning management system. So that's exciting. The D2L app is just about ready. We're just about we're going to be presenting it at the uh, D2L Fusion Conference next week, um, and it'll be launched shortly after that. And then, like I said, Blackboard and Canvas will follow. All right, so that's okay, it for um, um, the August Jason, update. Can I, Jason, just uh, before. Uh, we get off that point. If any of uh, you on the webinar would be interested in learning more about that LTI integration with your learning management system, please uh, type a quick note in the question box and I'll have uh, a sales consultant contact you and uh, let you know about the timing and how that would work uh, uh, so that you can take a look at that. So uh, the date of the D2L release, uh, Shirley had a question here, is in the next uh, few weeks. Is that correct, Jason? Yeah, it's in the next couple of weeks. We're just we've we're we're basically we're testing it now. Um, it's I mean it's it's in a, it's in it's in enough 
shape that we're actually are going to be presenting it at a the D2L Fusion conference next week. So we're just you know working out the final you know final things in it, and um, I would expect it to be launched. Um, I would certainly say by August first. Um, Fabulous. Good. And then, uh, yep, we have some other interested, uh, Lewis is interested also in Canvas. So as they get rolled out, uh, I will uh, have people contact you and we can show you how it works. All right. Uh, great. So uh, people can continue to pour in questions if you'd like. There was a, a question, a, a specific question about an assignment, uh, Jason. What would happen if a student uh, submitted the wrong document, as we've heard sometimes they do? So by an accident, they submit the wrong assignment document uh, in one of their assignments. Uh, what's the easiest way of a, for an instructor to, to correct something like that? Can you show that real quick? Um, is, it, is it having them resubmit the assignment? Can you reset the assignment? What would an instructor do if um, they see that? If, if they just submitted the wrong file? Correct. Yeah, let me, um, let's see here. I'm, gonna, I'm in here as a student. So I'll submit this assignment here. Um, and so that's EXO2 submitted file. Okay, so I'm going to submit that. Um, and then I realized that I submitted the wrong file. You can, the student can just delete it here by clicking the X next to it. And then resubmit the correct file. So did I just see you did that on behalf of the student, correct? Or was that the student? I did that as I, I did that as the student. If you were the instructor, so, can you do that for the student? Can you actually delete the one they submitted? Um that's a good question, Natalie. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here, Jason, but you know yeah, the sure. real live learning is what we do here at Labyrinth, right? <laughs> um That wasn't the right assignment. I'm sorry, let me, uh, it was an access assignment that I was doing. Right. And so while, while you're looking at that, uh, Joseph had a question. Um, Joseph, I believe that if the student uh, uh, changes the file that they submitted, if you haven't looked at it yet, then uh, no, you probably wouldn't know that they changed the file they submitted. If you have looked at it and graded it, then uh, they wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, no, the instructor does not have the ability to remove a student file. Um, they um, they would have to notify the student that it's the wrong file. Now, the student can replace that file until the instructor assigns a grade to it. So if you looked at that file and realized it was the wrong file, you could notify the student, you know, you attached the wrong file to this assignment, please delete it and attach the right file, and they'll be able to do that. If you graded the wrong file, then they can't, um, then they can't, um, um, you know, remove it. But what you could do then is you could allow um, a resubmission for that individual student. Great. Good. I hope that helped uh, answer that question. With respect to, we, we're going to circle back to the integration, the LTI integration. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Would, as a faculty, you're allowed to set up the course now and add one link at a time that will cover all the assignments and tests? It's not exactly. Uh, maybe you could just chat briefly about the benefit of the LTI. What? Yeah. So what, what's going to, so, okay. Each, each assignment or each test has to be, you know, a separate, a separate um, 
test or assignment because it needs to have, you know, each has to have a place in, in the gradebook, right? Let's, we've been working the D2L app, so let's just talk D2L right now, but, you know, you could apply this to either of the other two. So what the app allows you to do is go in, and so you first have to set, you know, you set up your eLab course, I mean, because, you know, you're using eLab content, so you would set up your tests and, you know, your assignments in eLab, and um, you go in and you, you, depending how you have your course set up, so maybe you've got, you know, modules, you know, for weeks one and two, weeks, you know, two and three, or maybe you've got it set up in your LMS by lessons or units or however, and so you can, you can basically, you drag an icon, um, and let me back up, your, your Blackboard D2L or Canvas administrator has to allow access to the app first, okay, and once they do that, then, you know, the instructors have access to it, and so there will be an icon that appears in, in your, in your interface, and you drag that icon to, you know, whichever module you want to put that particular content in, and when you drop it, it's going to ask you, okay, which eLab course do you want this content from? You choose your eLab course, and then it's going to it's going to have a kind of like a tree, you know, structure. Um, so it'll say, you know, content with a plus sign, and you click the plus sign, and you can go in and you can pick, you know, all of the learning content for a particular lesson, or you can, you know, uh, pick, in, you know, pieces of a lesson. Maybe you just want the videos. Then you expand assignments, and you pick what assignments you want to be in that particular module. Pick your tests, okay? Save it, and it and, and it creates multiple links at that point. That's what the app does for you. It it creates all those links for you in your in in D2L or in Blackboard. So you don't have to go in and create a link for test number one, test number two, test number three, whatever. By using the app. It will the app will automatically create those they call them deep links um, in into your learning management system for you and that will allow your student once they've logged into eLab once and entered their license key one time to then b bypass the eLab sign in um, so they don't have to remember their eLab login at that point and then it will automatically send those, send that grade back to your grade book. I, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Uh... If it didn't, I'm sure we can uh, talk more about it uh, if, as, uh, as it starts to get closer to be rolled out. And a question asked, is this going to be true for Moodle by any chance? Um, at this point, uh, we don't have a plan to do a Moodle app, but that doesn't mean we won't. Uh, our focus right now is on those other three. Great, thanks. Okay, we have, uh, I have only four minutes left. Uh, 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 another good question, and, and I think the answer is yes, Jason, I hope, is will we be offering a webinar for LTI 1.1? Sure, sure we will. Yep. I think that's a great idea. So um, uh, that's a, a good, uh, good thing to keep your eye out for as uh, we can continue to send uh, email invitations to webinars. Okay, uh, looks like uh, I've answered all of the, the stuff in the queue. We have only a few minutes left, so if there's any last-minute questions, please feel free to type away. And if not, Jason, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for presenting this webinar to all of us. As a final note for everyone, if you haven't created an eLab account, we do offer complimentary access to educators. You could sign up at labyrinthelab.com and register as an educator. We'll be happy to approve you. And if any of you are interested in having a sales rep contact you and give you a personal demo, we are also happy to do that. So just type a note to me in the question pane or fill out. There's a survey at the end of this webinar where we'll ask you if you'd like to be contacted. And feel free to reach out. Uh, we're happy to help. And I would just like to add uh, one thing, too, Natalie. Um, yes, please. I just, for those of you that are you know, current eLab users or those of you who may be evaluating eLab and you know, do ultimately decide to um, adopt it. Um, these features that I went over today, the features that are planned for the August release, and, you know, most of the, f you know, new features that we've implemented since eLab was released, um, gosh, six, seven years ago, um, you know, I like to think as the product manager that I have all the great ideas and come up with these ideas for new features. 
Um, and occasionally I, I do have one, but um, it, these really come from users. They come from instructors like yourself. And so if you're using eLab or if you, know, if you start begin using eLab um, and you see something that you just think could work better or you have an idea for a feature, please send it to us because you know, we do listen. And you know, we can't do everything that every you know, person asks, but we, we log it all and you know, we track you know, people who are asking for this. And so um, you know, we'll do what we can. Um, to, to, to get you know requests done, so uh, please uh, you know please don't hesitate to, to give us your, your ideas for how you know how we can make this product better. Super. Well, thanks all of you for attending today, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you on the next webinar. Have a great day. Okay. Right. Thanks, everyone.